So, uh, so we're all from uh, the Gilbert Elementary School, and we just want to really just, we don't have a question, but we just want to show our appreciation to, number one, just supporting bicycling, bicycling in general in Seattle, uh, supporting the, the, you know, all the Greenway efforts, and specifically, definitely, the Gilbert, you know, setting aside budget money for that one intersection where we had a, an accident, and where a couple of these kids go by every day, and actually some of these kids actually live right by the intersection. And just, you know, thank you for supporting bicycling and, and kids' safety. Thank you very much. So let me talk just a little bit about what we're doing, and, and bicycling in general, if you'll let me, because I oftentimes get a question about that. So one of the things we put into our budget is funding for safe routes to schools. And in that, there's a new movement, and you may have heard about it, called Neighborhood Greenways. In fact, our moderator is uh, an advocate of that and is wearing a, thank you, Heidi, and is wearing a shirt in that regard. And the idea of neighborhood, you know, when we started with the Bike Master Plan five years ago, it was oftentimes you, the bike routes were on the major streets and you had a bike lane and, and it was trying to figure out how you kept the autos and the cars coexisting on that street. And there were the long distance commuter routes for commuter bicyclists. And that tended to favor the younger, the braver uh, bikers. And it was very difficult for kids or others to use that. So we've been looking at what other cities are doing. Portland's done a really good job on this. The idea of neighborhood greenways is you find a residential street and you make it a priority for walking and biking um, so that there, you get an interconnected set of residential streets. And we have a few of those already. The big challenge is when the residential street hits the arterial street, there's oftentimes not a safe crossing. And, and so that's what, a lot of what the neighborhood greenways will do is look at places where you can cross the arterial. Now, it, it does give an advantage then to walkers as well. The other thing we're going to be looking at downtown is the, uh, can we get a, a bike, you know, a dedicated bike lane network downtown? Cycle tracks is the new phrase, where they're separated both from the cars and the walkers. Because one of the real negative things is you get conflicts when bikers don't feel comfortable on the roadway and they go up on the sidewalk, and that's very threatening to walkers, particularly if they're moving fast and you can't see them. It's legal for them to be on the sidewalks, but they're supposed to be moving slow enough to yield to everybody. And when you're in a congested area, like our Madison Park Business District, for example, downtown, it's really better for them to get off the bike altogether. So trying to create a network where, where everybody can know where they are, and it's safe for walkers, safe for bikers, safe for drivers, is a very high priority for, for this administration. We launched something called the Road Safety Summit, because we want to try to figure out how we can use engineering, design our streets better, educate people better on the rules of the road, enforcement, we're going to pick out the most dangerous places and enforce the rules more for whoever breaks and whoever's caught creating dangerous situations, you know, whatever this situation is. And we, and we have a great partnership from our, our King County Public Health. You know, automobile accidents are a leading cause of uh, death and injury for our young people. Um, and, and we have a partnership with Community Seattle as well as with uh, some of our businesses downtown as well to, you know, to try to talk about how we can have a good public education and road safety campaign. We're calling it Be Super Safe. It's kind of has a superhero <laughs> motif to it. Everybody, we want everybody to be super safe and look out for each other. And the safe routes to schools are a part of that. A statistic, when I grew up, and I'm going to get the statistic wrong, but when I grew up, about 50% of the trips to and from school were walking or biking. Today, kids, it's like 15%. It's at some point, people started driving their kids to school and it didn't become safe. And I look back at my childhood, and I, you know, I, and I look at my kids' childhood, and we drive them you know, to soccer practice and this and that and the other. And is their quality of life better than mine as a kid, where I played out in the street and, you know, walk to the neighbor's house and bike to school. And I can't say it is, so it'd be nice if we can get back to a time when kids can be really active and healthy. And that will help, uh, in the long run, for all of us, active, healthy lifestyles are really good. Um, being able to get 
physical activity in your daily life is really good for your health. And walkable, bikeable, safe communities are, are huge to integrating activity into your daily life and staying healthy for, for all ages, uh, me too. Okay, sorry, but that's the big picture of what we're trying to do with bicycling and road safety. If I can add one other thing, uh, when the mayor was coming to arrive at 10 o'clock this morning, uh, I think we all look for uh, motorcycle policemen and, and his Humvee and uh, I was looking for this big black car that had all kinds of safety protections and all of a sudden we saw a single man pedaling like hell down, <laughs> he was going down the hill and so indeed who showed up took off his helmet and we realized there was no one other than our mayor. <laughs> Thank you.